Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to New York City. I am currently here in the financial district of New York City. I'm going to be giving you an everything you need to know guide about New York City public transportation today. This video is going to be hard to ingest, and yes, you might be a little scared of New York City public transportation because it's confusing at times, but I'm going to give you guys and relay all the information that you need to know. Basically, a New York City public transportation guide for dummies. All the info that I have collected by living here for the last few months. Before we do anything, before we jump into it, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video because you're not going to want to miss a single video and I've covered a bunch of different topics all around New York City. With that being said, let's roll the intro. Alright guys, so we're going to break down this everything you need to know guide into sub-subjects. If you guys don't know, on my channel for the last few months, I have been covering basically all the notable neighborhoods and boroughs around New York City, and I've been giving them to you guys in ingestible little parts, and I've been breaking down those guides into sub-subjects. So I'll be doing the same thing for this video. The sub-subjects that we're gonna be covering today are gonna be three basic modes of transportation, and then the little bonuses. But the three basics are in New York City, the subway, the bus, and the ferry system. New York City is really, really well connected between the five boroughs, the four boroughs being Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn being really, really well connected, in Staten Island also being well connected but not on the same kind of system that the rest of them are in so it is overwhelming at times and it does look a little difficult from the outside especially when you first come here and first if it's your first trip here or if you're just moving here for the first time like I was a few months ago it's very very overwhelming it's scary but if you learn it a little bit if you learn of the basic makeup of the city and the basic makeup of how all the public transportation works it actually gets really really easy to understand because it's a it's a pretty straightforward system so let's start with this before we jump into any of the sub subjects Accept this right now. On your first time here to New York City, you're probably going to get lost at least once or twice. It happens to the best of us. It happens to everyone. It happens to me still on a regular basis. Sometimes you just get lost on the subway. You get lost on the bus. You get lost on some of the public transportation. It just happens because it is a little messy at times. But that being said, it's very easy. It's very forgiving to make up those mistakes if you ever make one. And you're never ever too far from any sort of help or assistance inside of the MTA system or the public transport system in New York City. Alrighty. So we're gonna start with the overwhelming task, the first sub-subject, which is going to be the subway system. And yes, the New York subway system is just called the subway. It's not called the tube. It's not called anything else like any other underground or anything like that, like from anywhere else in the world. It's just called the subway most of the times referred to as the subway or maybe very rarely the train. If you've traveled to other places around the world and you've been in other underground systems or subway systems around the world, the New York subway system is very, very interesting. Just across the road over there is the Oculus, which has one of the nicest, prettiest subway systems in all of New York city but if you go just a few hundred feet northeast from there you'll make it to chamber street station which is one of the most dilapidated subway stations in the whole system but expect when you come here to find some subway stations that are really nice most of them being inside of manhattan and some being really disgusting that being said how do you actually use this subway system what's the best way to get around using it the subway system in new york city runs 24 7. getting yourself a little metro card like this is going to be your best friend in new york city this is the metro card you can use this for both the bus and for the subway, it works for both. When you purchase this, you have a few options. You can get yourself a one-time fare ride, which is usually not really worth it. It costs 275, and it'll be a paper ticket. It won't look like this. This one is a plastic one. But with this plastic one, you can actually use to, you can swipe multiple times if you want in the different entrances to the subway system, and you can refill it and use it multiple times. So you have two different options when it comes to refilling a subway ticket. You can add value or you can add time. The time option will give you options for unlimited cards. Basically, you have the seven day option and the month option, which basically lets you fill this card up to last for however long that you want it between seven days to a month. The seven day costs about $30 and the month costs about a hundred and something dollars. In addition to that, you never have to get the unlimited card. You can just keep refilling this with a finite amount of money as much as you want. And uh, it'll cost you $2.75 per ride every time that you swipe this thing, whether it's in a bus or in a subway station. So like I mentioned earlier, the subway system in this city is really well connected between four of the boroughs. So Staten Island not being included in that, but the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn are really, really well connected with the trains. You can get to all four boroughs with the same exact subway system. Staten Island has its own railway, so you have to inquire about that when you get there, but it connects only a small portion of it, not the entire system, not the entire island. So just keep that in mind when you're going to Staten Island, but most people when they go to Staten Island either have a car, Uber, or use the bus, which is really useful over there. So the subway system in New York City has 27 different lines 
So there's a lot of different ones to remember. As well, 472 stations that all run 24 seven. During peak times and rush hour, the subway system runs more frequently, but later at night, there's typically a lot of closures for construction, as well as the subways become less frequent. So if you're looking for a line to get home late at night or something, do some pre-planning ahead of time because you might get stuck somewhere waiting for a little while longer. Also important to remember the way that the subway system is set up with the color coding is a little bit confusing. The subway system is set up not by colors, but by letters and numbers which are grouped into different colors. So for example, the one, two, three train are grouped into the red color circle. The four, five, six are green. The ACE are blue. So these are usually grouped together and are the same color, but their color doesn't mean much. So if you're gonna ask somebody how to get somewhere using the blue train, they're not really gonna know how to answer you. You're gonna have to result to specific letters or numbers. So just try not to get too confused with that, even though I know that it can get kind of confusing sometimes, but I'm gonna give you some more information that helps you on the exact color coding and numbers in just a minute. The subway system gets delayed pretty frequently, but it's also probably the fastest way to get around in New York City. It's usually faster than buses, definitely faster than cars, definitely faster than biking or Ubering or anything like that that so keep that in mind there will be delays plan accordingly I always try to leave to anywhere that I'm trying to go 20 minutes to 15 minutes early because I know there's probably gonna be some sort of delay and I usually still make it late to a lot of places all right as well this is a little bonus for you guys just to help you this is something that I learned very quickly when I moved here and I started using the subway system for Manhattan for the island of Manhattan where most of you guys coming to New York City are probably gonna spend most of your time in well, most lines are only going to be really running from south to north or north to south there's not really a lot going east to west specifically in Manhattan when you get down to Brooklyn it becomes a little bit of a mess to be honest with you guys okay so one more thing that I want to add about the subway stations is that some of them reuse the same name places like Canal Street will reuse the same name for the same station but at different points in the city so what makes it really easy for me is to just break down the city into a grid remember exactly what part of the city you want to go to and specifically remember what Canal Street station you want to go to on what line happened to me multiple times it'll probably happen to you where you think you're going to the right station and you end up a 10 or 15 minute walk away because you get off on the same street that you need to be on but not in the right station so we've jumped to an actual subway turnstile right now and I want to show you guys how you actually enter the subway with the Metro card because it can be kind of confusing here's the deal with it you go too fast it won't run you go too slow it won't run you have to hit it kind of perfect a lot of the subway stations are slowly revamping this right now so you can actually tap like in a lot of other places around the world but as of right now it's a little bit outdated and you have to swipe in every station so I'm gonna show you guys how you kind of do it and how you can mess it up so this is the actual turnstile right here we're gonna take the card and we're gonna run it I'm gonna show you guys the purposes there's a little LCD screen here okay so we're gonna do a really fast swipe right now check this out it'll say please swipe again because that was too fast now we'll do a really slow swipe oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, the purposes of the demonstration, that actually kind of worked perfect. Because it was unpredictable, now John is on the other just side. Just go of fast, yeah. I think just don't go, just don't go fast. That's the advice. Don't go fast. Once you swipe once, when you're on the unlimited card, it's going to last for 18 minutes. So you can't swipe again for another 18 minutes. So if you're in here, I can't use this card again for another 18 minutes. As well, luckily, this station is completely empty, so I felt comfortable doing this sort of demonstration for you guys. But a lot of times, you're going to be traveling in Times Square Station. You're going to be packed with people. If you've never used this card or if you're new to it, please please let everybody pass before you let all the people go into the station and then attempt going you don't want to be the person who's sitting there swiping 15 times getting it wrong every single time because that does happen and have a huge amount of people queuing up behind you all right let's jump back to the main video all right next thing we're gonna talk about is the buses and we can keep this one pretty brief because if you're a tourist here you're probably not gonna be taking too many bus rides the buses in the MTA system travel 234 local routes 71 different express routes 18 select bus service routes and it has a fleet of over five 5,700 buses which also runs 24 7 so it's a pretty reliable system here's the deal with the buses though a caveat to it is that they stop about every two blocks on average and so it makes it very very slow especially if you hit traffic especially if you're traveling within Manhattan what they're really good for in Manhattan like I mentioned a lot of the trains don't go east to west so a lot of times in Manhattan you find yourself getting off on a train somewhere on the east side and you can take a bus rather than a subway or an uber all the way to the west side when you're traveling to other parts of Brooklyn Queens Bronx and Staten Island 
island, the buses are super useful because a lot of places don't connect. They're really frequent. You can usually get picked up and dropped off anywhere that you want to go within the system. So buses, once again, are covered by that unlimited Metro card, like I mentioned earlier, and the bus fare, like I mentioned earlier, costs 275 each ride. All right, so the next mode of public transportation that we're gonna talk about is the ferry system. It's the oldest of the systems. It's the original way that people used to commute back in the day across New York City. So you really have two main ferry systems and then one kind of bonus one. You have the ferry systems on the East River and then you have the ferry systems on the Hudson River and then you have one free ferry that is city funded called the Staten Island Ferry. Okay, so the East River, for example, I'm gonna give you guys some ideas of stops that you can get off and on on in the East River. You have places like Astoria and Queens, North Williamsburg, South Williamsburg, Dumbo in Brooklyn and on the opposite side of Manhattan you have 34th Street and Wall Street. The area across the river is really well connected. The only caveat also to taking the ferries is a lot of times because they're dropping you right where the water is, right where the piers, there's not a lot of subway systems really close to that or really bus systems really close to that. So you might have to do a little bit of walking. That being said, the views specifically in the East River going across on the ferries are absolutely beautiful and the ferries actually offer bathrooms, a top deck to sit on, a bar with beer service and snacks and all this stuff as well it doesn't work with the same metro card that you would have you can use the app on your phone the nyc ferry app to buy a ticket it also costs 275 per ride all right so in addition to the east river side and the hudson river side we actually have the staten island ferry as well staten island ferry is a ferry provided for free by the city of new york it takes you to and from manhattan to staten island it'll take you from the kind of battery park staten island ferry port in manhattan to st george in staten Island. Island, which is kind of the hopping downtown part of Staten Island. 275 is your is your major cost when it comes to the ferries, and then free if you want to take the Staten Island ferry, and they're all pretty awesome. I actually really love the ferries, and I use them quite frequently. So I have my local resident New Yorker here, Mr. John Barr. You guys know him. You know you love him. It's here, B Barr. I think you love me. I don't know. <laughs> I want to get some information from him as well, because he's been living in New York way longer than I have, and he has more information on the kind of trains and planes and other kind of modes of transportation that are a little more obscure here in New York City. So John, tell us a little bit about what it's like flying in New York City, the airports and such things like that. Well, I would say one of the biggest advantages to living in New York is that you have three major area airports, JFK and Newark, pretty much fly anywhere in the world. So if you're looking to go anywhere, uh, you can pretty much start your journey either in Newark, which is actually closer to Midtown Manhattan than JFK. And then you have the smaller LaGuardia, which is always under construction, a little bit annoying to fly from there, but they fly to most of the major US cities at least. So you do have that major advantage flying from any of the three uh, area airports here. All right, so that was great information about flying in New York City, but John, I want you to tell us a little bit more about railway transportation that's outside side of the MTA. So let's start with the PATH trains. So I actually grew up uh, in northern New Jersey, so I'm really well versed with the PATH train because I'm always taking it from Manhattan uh, to go to Hoboken. And Hoboken is this big hub in New Jersey where a lot of trains to other points in North Jersey go. And literally taking the PATH train is just put your Metro card in. It's $2.75. It runs basically from 34th Street all the way down to the village, underground, under the water, over to Hoboken. You can also go to Jersey City. Big bonus about going to either Hoboken or Jersey City is the views of the Manhattan skyline from there. Absolutely incredible. Next, I'm gonna tell you about the Metro North Line. And essentially, it connects Grand Central Terminal, which is an amazing place just to go hang out and look up at the ceiling and the artwork. So it connects Grand Central with Connecticut and Westchester. I used to work for a TV station, so I was taking all of these local train lines. An important note about taking anything from Grand Central, Westchester, or Connecticut is your ticket. When you get that ticket, they punch it on the train. Do not get rid of that ticket you will need it on the way back to prove that you have a round trip. Now, if you take New Jersey Transit, for example, once they punch the ticket, it's done. You don't need it for the way back. Very important note, don't lose that ticket when you're, when you're going on Metro North. Uh, one more thing, we're gonna discuss the LIRR, which goes to Long Island, and that is stationed uh, at Penn Station. A Little bit hectic there, I don't love Penn Station that much, but if you need to go to Long Island for whatever reason, there are trains uh, that run all through Long Island going to a uh, Nassau and Suffolk County you know beautiful rides uh, same thing 
with the Metro North. Save your ticket if you're gonna do a round trip because they're gonna punch it one way, need that same ticket to get back. All right, so next I'm going to tell you guys about another mode of transportation. This is called biking. A lot of you guys might have heard of it. There's over 300 miles of bike paths across New York City, so there's a lot of potential if you wanna come here and bike as well. In a lot of different corners of the city, there are these rentable bikes. Um, the ones that are really famous in Manhattan are called city bikes. They're in a lot of the prominent locations. You can rent them out for a few hours and go ride around. They're usually pretty cheap. So I wanna tell you guys about Uber and Lyft as well. Uber and Lyft are a really famous mode of transportation within the city. Ever since Uber and Lyft have implemented their kind of ride sharing abilities within major cities similar to New York City, you can actually get Uber rides and Lyft rides for super, super, super cheap. As well, if you wanna ride Uber and Lyft, I actually have affiliate links down below in the description, which will help you guys get money off for your rides. As well, just as a little side note, if you are staying in New York City, first time coming here, if you're staying, I highly recommend getting an Airbnb. All these forms of transportations, usually Airbnbs are situated in really nice locations near modes of transportation. And I have a link for you guys in the description that will give you $40 off your first stay with an Airbnb. So if you use my link in the description and get yourself $40 off, that's almost a full night stay for free in some places. So check out my Airbnb link down below in the description. All right, John, hit us with the taxi stuff. Hit you with the taxi stuff, okay. Uh, there are some advantages actually to taking yellow cabs in New York to saying Uber or Lyft. I would say the big one is immediacy. If you get out onto the street and it just starts to pour, if there's a cab right there, you can just lift up your hand. And if the yellow light is unimportant, that yellow light needs to be on to show that, that the cab is available. The cab will pull over and you'll be on your way. That's advantage number one. Another advantage is taxis don't really have surge pricing. So let's say it's 10 o'clock on a Saturday night and everybody's taking Ubers to go to the East Village to party. That's a situation where I would much rather take a taxi because I know I'm actually gonna save money if Uber and Lyft have surge pricing going on. A lot of people don't realize that. And another advantage is with the popularity of Uber and Lyft these days, it is much easier to get a taxi. I see a lot more taxis being open right now because everybody's using Uber and Lyft, so don't count them out. Uh, another note is that they do accept credit card. It's not cash only. I think there's this misconception that you have to only pay cash in a cab. If you're not sure, just ask the driver, make sure that the credit card machine is working. And one cool thing is they also, a lot of them have little TVs playing stuff. Just a, a fun little thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end this video here. Thank you, John, so much for joining Anytime. me on this everything you need to know guide about public transportation. Guys, please go check out John below He's in the good. description. He's actually helped me learn about the subway systems a little bit as well in this video. As well, I wanna remind you guys that I've covered so many different topics about New York City in my channel on, my, on these different videos. So please go check out some of the other videos that I've done. I've covered all the neighborhoods, all the boroughs, everything that you need to know about this city has been covered on this channel already. As well, if you wanna support me, you can buy some merchandise down below in the description or on screen right now as well i have a patreon and with that i'm gonna let you know that i'll see you in the next one and i love you a long time goodbye class john slap him out